Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today all sites please stand by channel one communication switching to channel one all right here it comes be ready switch controls to manual override awaiting confirmation of the video feed countdown is running at five four three two one the mikey podcast Yo, and welcome back to the award-winning Mikey Podcast, a satirical take on news, live current events, and more. This is day two of the 31 podcasts in 31 days, which I got to tell you, already a struggle because I, I'll get into why I'm, I'm not feeling well today, and it's only the second day and I'm having a hard time, but it is, it is what it is, and I have to also start off with telling you that my fiance doesn't think that I can do it, and she's crazy. She has valid reasons for it. Uh, she said I couldn't even finish this stupid coffee advent calendar that I was trying to do. And she's not wrong. No, she's, she's right. So I guess that is kind of a good point. But to my defense, that coffee was shit. Okay. And I really did try. <laughs> if you're following me on uh, my personal Instagram and shit like that, you know, I tried. I did my best. I did what I could do. The coffee was not good. So I, I didn't want to keep doing the same video over and over and over again, talking about beaver butt juice and stuff. I, I, it's like the coffee's bad. It is, I'm not going to keep drinking bad coffee. I want good coffee. So screw that shit. And if you're not following me, you should on all my socials. The link is in the description, but fuck that. So here's the thing. I can, if I can, you know, barring any of those reasons I gave yesterday as to why I wouldn't be able to do a podcast every day, 31 podcasts in 31 days, uh, I can and I will do this, I think, every day. Even if it's like five minutes, like, is that like, I don't know, it takes me 10 minutes to, to I record something. So we just do, do, do it in the garage or whatever. I could do it on the phone. I will do this. Uh, but it is like, and I was sitting there wondering, like, how the fuck, like, well, how am I going to come up with the content every single day for a podcast for 31 days? That's a lot of stuff, dude. And then I realized I'm kind of lucky because I do have a little bit of a creative helper, just a little tiny bit higher elevation. They definitely help in the creative department, also with the relaxation department, the motivation departments, pretty much every department you might need a little bit of help in. Also with a little bit of fuck it. They can put a little fuck it in your life if you need it. They got it. They got all the fuck it. They got all the departments, everything you need, higherelevation.com. Use promo code Mikey and save yourself 20%. But I do wonder if they have anything for nausea. So I was telling you I didn't really feel good this morning. I still kind of don't feel good, man. I'm not going to lie. Since yesterday, I've been feeling kind of shitty. Uh, it, not, not really the best way to start the new year, but what are you going to do, I guess? Um, last year... I started off the new year. I was in I was in Disneyland. I was fine. My fiance ended up getting COVID. So, and then I got COVID a few weeks later. But I so I guess this is my turn to kind of be sick on New Year's Day and the day I mean New Year's week, I suppose. I don't even know what this is. I don't, but it was like I, I probably I think I just ate something really bad. Like last night was probably the worst sleep I've had in a really, really long time, maybe even ever. Starting probably about 1 30 in the morning and pretty much every 30 minutes the rest of the night. I was up. I felt like I was going to throw up. I felt like I was going to have to fucking drop a deuce. I still kind of feel that way. It kind of, it comes in waves. So I, I don't, like I said, maybe I just ate something. Maybe there's something going around. I don't have a fever or anything. So I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, but if I have to peel out of this podcast, this episode a little bit early, now you know why it is what it is. I'll try not to puke or on myself or poop on my, poop my pants while I'm doing the show. I mean, unless you're into that kind of thing, I suppose. If that's your kind of thing, subscribe for less than 10 cents a day. Maybe you'll see it. Look, I'm not above doing weird shit for money. I'll tell you that right now. Hit the subscribe here button right there in the description uh, or get over to MikeyPodcast.com. Support the award-winning shit show, man. That's what you got to do. You never know what you'll see because subscribers get access. They get video access. They get they get the unlock of the first two seasons of the Mikey Podcast and everything is commercial free for them. Plus, it keeps the podcast going. And without it, there is no Mikey Podcast. Then what? What are you going to do then? Then your life gets fucking, then your life is boring. Then what? You got no Mikey. So support the show so you have something better to do. Uh, by the way, just a quick reminder that I am still working on all the details for the January 23rd episode, which is going to be awesome and how I present that show. I cannot wait. It is exciting. I have a lot of people hitting me up, uh, messaging me and emailing and talking about, you know, they can't wait for that show. How's it going to go down? Who's going to be on it? I don't want to give too much away 
or get set expectations too high. So just just be there January 23rd. It will be good. But bridges will be burned. And the truth shall set you free. Today's episode is going to be uh, full of a lot of information because a lot has gone down over the past few weeks. And uh, with the holidays, it's kind of fucking hard to keep up with all that stuff. You know what I mean? So let's just get right into it. First, there's more from the Twitter files. If you've been following long, then you know that Twitter has been releasing tons of information about how social media, how that social media giant, along with other fucking social media giants, worked with the federal government to censor information, blacklist users, delete accounts, and a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. Uh, but basically, at this point, Twitter and Facebook and every other social media sites are just an extension of the government. And I'm not even joking. Like, now you know that. You need to know that. Accept it now. It is what it is. Always be aware of that as you post things. They're just an extension of the federal government. And it's been proven over the past few weeks. Listen to this shit. And honestly, it's not just censorship. Okay, at the request of the Pentagon, Twitter knowingly allowed the U.S. military to host fake accounts to spread propaganda overseas for at least five years. Can you hear that? There's like a weird buzz. So I know it's kind of came out of nowhere. I stopped talking and then it was like, can you hear that? It's like this weird buzz. And I can't figure out what it is. And I'm adjusting things in the studio and kind of moving some lighting and stuff around. As you can see, there's a little bit of a different setup. So I'm trying to figure out where that is. If that pops back in and I stopped talking, I got to try to get rid of that because it's driving me fucking insane. insane. Well, where was it? For the last five years, by the way. Okay. The Pentagon has been working with Twitter and, and Twitter has been knowingly allowing the U.S. military. I'm just repeating this. To host fake accounts to spread propaganda overseas for at least five years, at least five years. It's been going on much longer than that. I promise you that. So if, if, if it's, it's basically someone's job in the military to pretend to be someone else on the internet. This is like military trolls. I think I could fucking do that job. I know I could. I'd be trolling people left and right. I do it already. I could, if I did it for the federal government, that'd be awesome. But if you think they're only doing it overseas, then you're highly fucking brainwashed. Uh, despite Twitter's own policies against deceptive state-run accounts, Twitter put U.S. accounts on special white li- on a, like a special whitelist, granting them immun- immunity while they shut down accounts from you know other fucking governments around the world. So America's all good. Which I, I look, I'm not mad about that. I, whatever. I'm pretty sure anyone who uses the internet and social media as much as I do, at least, uh, they know that the government was and is using fake accounts for to, pretending to be people on the internet. People on the internet call these fake accounts shills. Like it's a it's a well known thing. It's been going on for a long fucking time, but. And it's not in, they're not just doing it in, in other countries. Okay. They're doing it here too. Uh, so, but to pretend like this, so that stuff doesn't really bother me. I mean, it does that they're doing that. As long as you know that that's happening, you basically can't believe or trust anything, but to pretend like it didn't exist and then lie about it. That's kind of where I have a problem with this whole thing and, and what it's even used for. That's that makes it worse. Okay. These accounts were disguised as users, uh, a, a native to different Middle Eastern countries like, like Iraq and Yemen, Syria, Kuwait. Why is it always Middle East? Like, what the fuck, man? We're always over there fucking around trying to get their oil and shit. Here telling everybody, brainless fucking Americans, that electricity power is the way to fucking go, but then we're still protecting everybody's oil. Why do we want their oil so bad then? Anyway. Uh, the posted messages, uh, it, it, they posted messages, I'm sorry, in defense of U.S. military actions. So it's like jo- drone strikes or whatever. So they would be pretending to be from the Middle East, one of those Middle Eastern countries, Yemen, Syria, whatever, and then act, and then talk, basically promoting these these the, the military actions of the U.S. while accusing enemies of horrific violence in order to justify the U.S. intervention. Literally lying. This military, these people for the U.S. military literally lying to the public in other countries in order to get them to be okay with the fact that we're bombing them. That's what that to, to break that down so you know what what to make it make sense is one of my favorite things to say. Make it make sense. I just made it make sense for you. We, we were lying to citizens of other countries in order for them to be cool with us bombing them and killing their citizens. Is that cool? Is that all right? You good with that? You good with the American uh, government doing that shit? Those accounts are still up, by the way. They haven't been taken down. Elon, I know you're listening. I know you're a big fan of this podcast. I know you've, you've, you've been reaching out to me trying to get on the show. I'll get to you when I get to you, man. Calm down. But Elon Musk, you got to take this shit down if you're listening right now. I know you're listening. Take those accounts down. It's not okay. Uh, the Pentagon even held classified meetings with both Twitter and Facebook about these, these, these particular secret propaganda accounts. 
Now, Twitter has never admitted to this partnership publicly, unlike Facebook. Fucking Mark Zuckerberg was told everybody, yeah, you know, if FBI calls us and ask us to do this or be on the lookout for this or whatever the fuck. Mark's like, yeah, well, you know, we got we got you covered. We're on, we are on your side. Yeah. Jerks. Uh, but they but Twitter actually went and told Congress that it always removed deceptive government accounts. That is not true. Because Twitter's then CEO and head counsel even went on the Joe Rogan podcast to claim that they weren't working with the government or censoring people. None of this is true. Like I'm, I'm telling you what they did, but that is not what happened. The, I, the proof is here. The proof came out in their own goddamn paperwork, or their own um, messaging. So I mean, the, the, the CEO of the company is releasing all this information. So it's just another Twitter lie. You know, and and by the way, that was a great episode of the Joe Rogan podcast when he had when he had the former CEO, uh, the guy who looks like a I forgot, fuck, I forget his name, but he looks like a terrorist. He's got the he's got a terrorist beard, he's shaved. He looks like a terrorist. But had, they had him on, and uh, the the head counsel of Twitter at the time they they brought on Tim Cast, who was another great podcaster. I'm sure I'm sure you've heard of him. If you listen to this podcast, you you probably know who the Tim Cast podcast is. Uh, but Tim Cast was on, and it was just a great episode. He was calling them out, asking a bunch of questions. It was fucking glorious. But Twitter is full of shit. Okay, it really is. Employees even fucking celebrated in emails when the Washington Post that Washington Post put out a story that failed to expose the company's participation in military operations. Like they tried to, but nobody believed it. They tried and failed. Nobody, they called it conspiracy theories because there was other fake accounts on Twitter pushing and saying, this is fake, this is fake news, this is not real, blah, blah, blah. I'm so tired of this shit. I'm tired of the words fake news. That, those, those, whoever made that up sucks. I hate hearing it because there's a lot of fake news in the world, but now everything, everything can't be fake news. Some of it's got to be real, right? Not everything's a conspiracy. Uh, but these these fuckers are like these people are like celebrate high fiving behind the scenes while they manipulate the world and work with the governments to fuck over citizens. That's insane to me. I, I we can't we can't continue to allow shit like this to go down. We we really can't. Uh, there's the, the numerous Twitter file drops that have that have happened over the past couple of weeks. They prove that the platform has acted as an arm of the government not only for domestic political censorship but for war propaganda, and that is extremely alarming. The federal government covertly used social media companies to spy on people, censor people, discredit people, and literally spread propaganda. Literally. Like, I'm not just making this up. Like, this is not fake. I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't... For years, people would tell me that I'm crazy, that, that, that this is a conspiracy, that none of this is true. But it's all here. And the, the, you know what? You know what the worst thing about some of this is? Is that people fucking will literally believe that it's a conspiracy. Because why? Because CNN told CNN said, oh, it's a conspiracy. It's not real. I shouldn't worry about that. Well, you're an asshole because you should be worried about the government using social media sites to spread propaganda. That's insane to me. Fuck. But don't get too excited, trumpets. Because I know you are. I know you're jumping up and down like Mikey's over here fucking telling everybody to to not believe, you know, Twitter or whatever, like it's some sort of left wing bullshit. I'm telling you, it's all the government. It's the Trumpets. It's the the Brandons. It's everybody. Okay. By the way, Trumpets, if you don't get it, that's what I like to call people who love Donald Trump. They're Trumpets. But it wasn't just the Brandon regime. Trump was doing it too. Trump and Brandon both pushed for pandemic censorship. Under former President Donald Trump, the White House held meetings with Twitter, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and pretty much everybody during the COVID-19 fucking outbreak. Uh, he, he, so they did, they wanted to do a little bit of censorship. To hear this out, this is, this I kind I kind of find this a little bit amusing. Officials wanted censorship of misinformation. Regarding what? Regarding mass panic buying at grocery stores. Even though it was happening, like everybody knew that it was happening. You go to the grocery store, you can see the shelves were empty. The the, the stores, or I'm sorry, the news was, it was all over. The news was everywhere. Try to go to Costco during the pandemic. It was fucking insane. They didn't want people running out and buying all the goddamn toilet paper. For fuck's sake. And that's what we did too. Like we heard that there was a virus coming from China. The China virus was on its way. The government was going to shut down the world for two weeks. We needed two weeks to flatten the curve. What do we do? We go buy all the toilet paper. Why? Of all the things... We went and bought all the toilet paper. And I, I got, I'm not going to lie. I did too. Fuck. I did it because because I was worried that all you assholes were going to buy all the toilet paper and then I wasn't going to have anything to wipe my ass with. By the way, that's a bunch of poop talk. I can play the talk. Poop. 
Sorry, I, I know that's from my old radio show, but I like it. I made it. I own it. I'm going to play whatever the fuck I want to. So Trump didn't want people, again, to go out and buy all the shit paper, which is, I, I guess I kind of understand that. People need toilet paper. What are you going to do? Wipe your ass with your hand? Use a towel? Take a shower. That's what you should do. If you run out of toilet paper, by the way, I've said this on the air many times. Okay, don't shower, then poop. Okay, poop, then shower. Everybody knows that. I don't I don't think I needed to say that. Uh, but if you run, just a little, you know, just a little fucking life hack. <laughs> if you run out of toilet paper, take a shower. Just rinse it out. It's like it's like a bidet. That's what we need, by the way. Why why are we so anti-bidet? I don't think I've ever used no, I don't know. I've never used a bidet, but I think I might like it. Why does it clean it out? <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Uh, but under so Trump didn't want people to buy the fucking shit paper, but it was Brandon. It was under President Brandon. The White House pressured Twitter uh, to to ban COVID vaccine skeptics, most notably Alex. Bar uh, I think it's Berenson. I think that's how you say his last name. That guy fucking sued Twitter. He reached a settlement with them uh, when they suspended his account. This guy sued like they suspended him and his ass sued. It was like fuck you. You're like why are you gonna suspend me for? And he won. Well, they never let it go to court. He settled, but he got his money back. He got money, and I believe he got his account back. Uh, this guy had hundreds of thousands of followers, and all he did was just question the narrative. He he basically posted published medical journals and science and questioned and just questioned it, just questioned it. That's it. And they tried to ruin his livelihood at the request of the Brandon regime. All right, even one Twitter employee described Brandon officials as very angry that Twitter hadn't banned enough accounts. Are you kidding me? I I watched my my Twitter following account and go from like a few, cause I don't follow a whole lot of people on Twitter, but I was following a lot, you know, leading into the election and stuff just to kind of get real information. I thought I was getting real information. Um, and, to, and then I watched my, my account like drop by hundreds of people that I was following and even people following me. It was, it was very odd and it all happened really, really fast. But, it, but it's not like Brandon was over there. Like you need to fucking ban Mikey. He doesn't know who the fuck I am, but maybe Gavin Newsom does that asshole. Uh, now a lot of Twitter's content moderation was conducted by uh, contractors and bots. So I just want to point that out. I want you to know that it's like some of those, some of the people that were getting banned, they were getting banned by robots. It wasn't even like a person. Okay. So, I mean, th there were, con there were separate contractors. So the people in other countries, the people work for, who live in India who are banning Americans for, for questioning COVID. Are you fucking serious? They often banned every COVID-related, con everything that was brought up about COVID. They banned it based on overly simplistic standards, especially the bots, which relied on AI and machine learning. Of course, that doesn't make it right, and it definitely sounds like an excuse, but I'm just letting you know that a lot of those people that did get banned, it wasn't like there was a human there going to ban that person. It was just a bot, and then... And then at some point, you know, every once in a while, a human would be, would have to have to intervene to to see if it needed to really actually be banned or whatever it is, especially if people uh, raise the flag to it. Um, but a lot of these tweets, like a lot of them were, were marked as misleading. And um, a lot of these banned accounts were, you know, uh, misinformation spreaders is what they said. But it turns out these these users and these tweets were being punished for things that were have now been proven true. Okay, all like now this is where I got to say this is one of those things that I talk about when I say go, you got to go back and listen to past episodes because there's I've talked about so many different things that have come true. I've gotten in arguments on Facebook about stuff that I've said on this podcast where I give people the actual facts, stuff from the straight from the CDC sometimes. And I'm like, you got to read this stuff. You got to listen to the podcast, read this stuff, whatever. You can't argue with the facts. People like to argue with facts all the time. And it's like, dude, if you, you can't, your feelings don't fucking matter. Just because you, you got duped into getting a vaccination or believing that COVID was going to actually fucking kill you because you believed everything the government said blanketly without even asking a single question, just because that does not give you the right to just ignore facts. That's just not how the world works. Okay. You have to understand facts matter and your feelings fucking don't. Like I said, these tweets, a lot of these people were being punished for, for things that include uh, about masks, which I brought up and said that masks don't work. Uh, the vaccine efficacy, which I've said a thousand times is useless. Uh, the side effects of the vaccine. I had so many people tell me I'm just a conspiracy theorist and anti or blah, blah, blah. The side effects of the vaccine are worse than getting COVID. I've said that since the vaccine came out. Okay. And the transmission rate among vaccinated people. Remember when they tried to they try to tell you that oh it's a it's a it's it's a it's a virus of the or a pandemic of the of the unvaccinated. As a matter of fact, it's not. It's a pandemic of the vaccinated and has been for a fucking while now. 
So some of these banned tweets, they, they featured shit from medical experts, published studies like I just said, and even data from the CDC. Yet they still ban them, and they still fucking mark them as misinformation. It's the, the, the point of all this is, is it sh- and, and this should piss you off, is that the federal government used its power to silence opposition against, COVID, against the COVID narrative, leading to needless, divisive, and destructive COVID policies across the U.S. and around the world. Hella families were destroyed. People lost their fucking jobs. People, people's livelihoods were threatened. People were shunned by their neighbors and their communities. Just for what? For what? For questioning the narrative. For not wanting to to inject themselves with an unproven chemical made by a company who's been sued countless times and has paid out billions of dollars in fines and 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 lawsuits because they've killed people or damaged people with their vaccines. None of what I just said is made up. Everything of that is true, and you could you could fucking look it back it all up. Stop, stop. You know what? For twenty twenty three, here's something you should do: stop blindly doing what people tell you to do. <laughs> Even though I just told you to do something, you don't have to listen to me though. You do whatever the fuck you want. I just think it's a good idea. I suggest it. All right. But the, these people, like fa- so many people, so many lives ruined for doing what? Like I said, do for doing what I've been telling you to do my entire career, question everything. Now at this point in the pandemic or whatever the fuck this is at, right now, so that noise is back. Do you hear it? Hang on. Is it gone? Hello? I have no idea. I'll figure it out. It'll be gone by the next episode. You may not even be able to hear it. It might just be me. Anyway, at this point, if you've made it through the pandemic and all the propaganda and all, and you're still a pure blood, I am proud of you and you should be proud of yourself because they went really hard on us. Pat your fucking self. First of all, pat yourself on the back for listening to the Mikey podcast, the award-winning Mikey podcast. Like, good job for you. Like, you're a smart person. I appreciate you. But also pat yourself on the back for not falling for the bullshit. I know that some people had to. And I get it. I know that your your job was threatened. You were going to lose your job. You're going to lose your medical insurance. I, I don't blame you. You had to do what you had to do. But for those people who stuck it out, good job. But also, you know, I feel bad for the people who didn't, for the people who had no choice but to get vaccinated or their, or their, life, or their lives were going to be ruined. Sick people, see, people who need their medical insurance. I just, it, it's really fucking sad is what it is. But, you know, but what can we do about it? You know, that's what you got to ask. Like, what what really can we do about all this? And what are we going to do about it? We can't just continue to let them do this shit to us because because even though we're calling it out, so even though it's being put out there in the open and it's being called out, and I've been personally just myself been calling it out, but there's hundreds of other podcasters and radio personalities and people on TV who who've been calling it out too, but nothing gets done. Now, I got to kind of admit, I do like what Elon is doing here. I I know I called him the fucking uh, Antichrist yesterday or whatever, but I like it. He's done more for free speech than any other person in my lifetime. Seriously, besides maybe Julian Assange. And like I said, even though I said that he's probably the Antichrist, which he probably is, I'm looking forward to more Twitter files coming out and more are supposed to be coming this week. Because this is going to be, this to me is going to be the exciting one. Because I've been talking shit about Anthony. Hey, Fauci. Hey, I'm Anthony Fauci. How's it going? You doing, Fauci? Hey. Take my fucking vaccine. I'm Anthony Fauci. How you doing? Uh, I hate that guy. I know he doesn't sound anything like that, but that's my impression of Anthony Fauci. Even with an, an Italian last name, he sounds like Sylvester Stallone. Hey, how you doing? I'm Anthony Fauci. My, my name is Mikey Muscatello. How you doing? Huh? Hey. Uh, but anyway, he said the Fauci files are coming, and I am definitely looking forward to that. I think it'll be interesting because we've we've all this stuff, all these conspiracies every quote unquote conspiracy that has been out there about Twitter has, has kind of fucking come true. And even Elon himself pointed it out and said pretty much every conspiracy that has ever been said about Twitter is true. So now I can't wait to find out the conspiracies or the truth about Anthony Fauci. Hey now, Hey, the Fauci, I'm the Fauci, the Fauci files. So anyway, whenever that's released, uh, we'll have an update on that. Uh, I'll also share it. You can f- on, on Instagram and, and Facebook and stuff like that. You should definitely be following me on on the Instagram, the personal page, and the podcast page. I know I said that um that I'd share on Facebook, but I kind of can't share on Facebook right now because I am suspended again for what I don't know. Facebook said I posted something sexual or whatever, and they didn't show me the picture and wouldn't give me an opportunity to uh, to to appeal it. So fuck them. So follow me on Instagram. I know it's the same company, but Instagram tends to. Uh, not ban me as much. Plus, I post like questions and polls on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. Uh, it's in your responses. 
they sometimes make it on the show, which is cool. Like I did that, well, I did a, what was it, an AMA a couple of weeks ago. That was fun. Uh, but last weekend, I posted asking people to tell me what their New Year's resolutions or goals were. Because I, you know, I talked about my own and what, you know, what I, what my New Year's resolution, I want, again, I'm, I'm on this podcast tip. I want to make this podcast one of the biggest podcasts around. I want to, there's a certain number of subscribers that I want to hit. And uh, in order for me to be able to keep doing the podcast, I do have to hit that certain number of pod, of subscribers. So if you're a freeloader listening to this right now, you could be a subscriber watching it and also helping support this podcast and keep it going. Cause I would love to keep doing it and not have to stop and get a real job. That would be terrible. Uh, but again, I asked people to, to tell me their new year's resolutions. And of course I got a lot of the same shit, lose weight, read more, eat more at home, cook more, all the boring stuff, shit like that. Uh, and I also got those, those people who fucking like, who are too good for new year's resolutions and feel the need to tell everyone, you know, what I'm talking about. There's always one or two people. I don't make new year's resolutions. I don't need to do that. I'm if you're they're stupid. If I need to make a change, I just do it. I just make a change. I don't wait for a day, blah, 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 blah. Go fuck yourself. Because some people don't do that. Some people like to use New Year's as a way to set a goal or make a resolution. Now, I don't personally make resolutions. I don't. And I know I just said I I have something for the year, but it's these are goals that I set for myself. And it's more like I use the, the New Year to reset. Think about the goals that I set from last year that I may or may not have hit and see what I can do for the, the next, you know, the next 12 months. I like it. Plus, you know, if people want to set resolutions, who the fuck cares? What's the problem? If it makes them feel good, why do you care? Shut the hell up. But anyway, after reading all those people's resolutions, it seemed like some people just need to like, need to, some people just need minor low effort New Year's resolutions, especially the people who say they don't need to make a resolution. Those are the people who should be paying attention the most right now. All right, because those the, the new resolutions are for losers. Fuck off, man. You're gonna you need to make a res New Year's resolution, and I'm gonna help you because that's what I do. Because the Monkey Podcast not only makes you smarter and uh, entertains you, I like to help. Sometimes go back and listen to past episodes. You never know. Sometimes you get some help from me. So here's a handful of easy to do New Year's resolutions that will, in fact, change your life for the better. All right, this is a pretty easy one. Reach out to your friends regularly men and fathers in particular are super guilty of letting their old friendships kind of just fall to the wayside and just kind of just letting it go uh you tell yourself oh, i'll check in with with whoever next week at jim hey jim I'll check, I'll check in with jim next weekend when i get the time but the time never comes you never get a more convenient time so you kind of just have to do it and as we age like our real life social networks become thin or non-existent so those connections that uh, from our friends Dude, they're immensely valuable, okay? And the older I get, I'm learning more and more about, about friendships and how I wish to God I would have been a better friend to a lot of people and, I, and, and not put my career first or not been like, oh, I'll get back to them later or I'll text them later or I'll send them that message later. There's never a better time to do that than at that particular moment, okay? So like I've lost friends because I just haven't texted them back or sent them a message. And then it's like six, six months later. And I feel like an asshole because I didn't do it. So I, I just, yeah, it's just kind of sad to, to think about the friends that I lost because of my career and because of just, yeah, fuck out of pure laziness sometimes, but we need friends. Okay. We need friends for support. We need, for, but also to, to help us for stress relief, relief and connection, emotional intimacy, which I know is weird, but honestly, men need that shit. All right. And it doesn't matter how much you reach out. Just do it. Just do it often and, and send them a text, send them a DM, send them whatever. Say, hey, I just want to see what you're hey, how you doing. Just checking it. Hey, you, you can become the Italian guy. Hey, see, there's that noise again. It's back. You hear it. I know you hear it. Anyway, hey, no, I'm not going to do it. Now I lost the moment. I lost the fucking mojo because of the stupid noise. Fucking thing. Maybe I just need a new cord. I don't know. Stupid fucking. We'll do it live. Uh, listen, more actually. Problem solve less. That was the next one I was trying to say. Listen more and problem solve less. Dudes, this is really for us, okay? Because we're problem solvers by nature, you know what I mean? But we need to chill out and listen a little bit more. Listening is like a skill that requires constant improvement. It's not just something you're just good at. Like, you have to constantly work at it. Uh, it, it requires a number of small techniques that work together to let another person know that what they're saying has been heard and understood without just nodding or going, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, and don't offer to fix a problem unless that's what the person you're communicating with, with wants. Because a lot of times, like, I'm just going to use my life. For example, sometimes my fiance will, 
vent or say, you know, talk about problems or whatever. And I'll want to try to fix it because as a man, you know, I try to be a fixer, but that's not what she wants. She just wants, she just wants to talk and get it off her chest and talk it out and just vent. And sometimes that's what you got to do. Sometimes you just got to listen. Another one that I think is really easy that you can do, this is a New Year's resolution that you can do that's very simple, especially for people who don't like to make New Year's resolutions. If you're, if you are a parent, observe your kid. Seriously, just sit there, watch and listen. And, and long enough to notice the gap in their fucking teeth, long enough to, to notice the sound of their voices or the, or the way, the way the pitch changes when they're talking about certain things or the way they walk or the way they just sit there, the way they eat or, or when they go into the cabinet and they're looking for food, how they hold onto the, the cabinet, just stare at your child because that little child isn't going to be a child forever, you know? And some really smart man once said, life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And that's true. And I stop and I look back and I think about my, my, my little munchkin and she's 10 years old right now. It's like, where the fuck did that 10 years go? What the fuck have we been doing? Where am I? I'm in California. When she was born, I was in Boston. It's just, it's crazy. So just stop, just stop and, and look. And this kind of leads into the next thing. Be present, you know, and do it so it's actually noticeable by your kid. Okay. It will make a huge difference difference. This, this can apply to your wife or husband too. And, but we're talking about kids here. Uh, and, and make sure you have, you know, if you're going to be present, which is again, important in every aspect of your life. I, I, don't know, I talk about it all the time. I think that you should make sure you have some one-on-one -on -one time with your kid. And if you have more than one kid, do it separately. You know, like this is just you and your child. That's it. You can, you can put it on the fridge, put it on the, the calendar that you have on your fridge or on the wall or whatever, write it down there, put it, say, this is the day that dad and, and so and so are going to be together or mom or whatever. These are the day, this is the day that this is our day. And you know, they put it up there and the kids look forward to that stuff. And it's fucking cool, man. Kids like that shit. And it's so easy and it could be anything. It could be reading together, playing a game together, just going going for a walk together, having lunch together. Really, it could just be anything, but that would be your time. Just you guys. That's important. These things are so important. You know, when you're doing this, you're creating a well-rounded, thoughtful human. And, and, uh, who, who, when you, and when you give them the uninterrupted, uninterrupted, uninterrupted time that they need or want, man, it's just, it changes them. It really does. And it's going to change you too, I promise you. You know, something else you need to probably do is, is this is a really easy one. And this is one of my favorites is you need to make sure you're giving yourself some time, 10 15 minutes a day if you can. Not not while you're dropping a fucking deuce. Not while you're on the phone, you know, mindless scrolling or whatever. None of that type of stuff. Not while you're taking a shower. I'm talking about like your time. Like you can meditate. You could you, you could it could be when you're working out. You could you could go for a walk in in and it's just you or my favorite, like I said, meditating. That shit makes a huge difference in your life. It really does. I've said it so many times and and I know that, you know, people don't it's not for everybody. Not everyone's going to to meditate. Uh, but I, t I tell you, it really does change you and it's gradual. It's a gradual change. And if you do start to meditate, it's not easy. You know, it's, it, it takes practice and in practice over time. And as, and as time goes on, it becomes easier and it really becomes a real amazing feeling. I think, I think you really, really would like it. But if you're in a marriage, another thing you can do, and this could be for the two of you is you got to prioritize, prioritize date nights at least once a month at minimum. If you could do one every other week, great. Twice a month, perfect. Three times a month, even better. But they're not, it's a necessary ingredient ingredient for a happy marriage or a happy relationship of any kind. You have to keep you and your partner connected with each other. It's you have to. You have to keep the love alive, man. I know that that it's sometimes kind of hard to go out in in this world, but you got to do it. Make that time. Just go have dinner together. Go go have coffee together. Go to a park. Do something just together. Outside of the normal shit that you'd like grocery shopping, whatever. that's not a fucking date. That's being parents. <laughs> but you got, you have to, okay? Uh, and this one, this, and one last very simple thing that you can do, just try to resolve to do this year. And it's going to sound a little weird, but it's like take a minute. I know I just said, you know, take 10, 15 minutes just for yourself, but that's not what I mean here. What I'm trying to say is like, try to carve out like just a, a brief moment of time, whether it's 30 seconds or a minute where you shift from work mode 
to dad mode, husband mode, wife mode, whatever it is, 30 seconds or until the end of a song, whatever it is, before you come down from your office or, or get out of the car from coming home from work, just kind of like, just take a minute and, and reset if you can. It kind of gives you the motivation you need to take the, to take, uh, to kind of take on the next situation with more intention, you know, and less scrambling. So if you go from like work to downstairs immediately or, or, you know, office to home immediately with no time in between you are, you're kind of scrambling. You didn't really prepare yourself for what's happening next. Not that you really need to get prepared to handle yourself at home because that stuff is easier to handle than it is work stuff, but it's nice to kind of just get off of autopilot. You know what I mean? Get out of autopilot mode and then get into I'm home mode, which is the best mode to be in. And it helps us try to be present too, you know? Like, I don't know how many times I've said that on the podcast, but being present to you to you and your family in, in any moment that you're in is honestly, honestly one of the most important things that you can do, and it's super easy. Just be there and put your phone down. You can literally turn this podcast off, look around for 30 seconds, soak it in, and then join and be present. It's, that's how fucking simple it is. And you can just enjoy the rest of your day, which I hope that you have today off or you did have today off, whatever time you're listening to this podcast. I don't know. It is, it's January 2nd. This is day two of the 31 podcasts in 31 days. Uh, it, it, and try to implement some of these in, in your life and, and see, see if it helps. I think it will. I promise you'll notice a difference after a little while. Uh, one other thing you can definitely do to you can resolve for this year, for this year. One of the biggest probably New Year's resolutions that you can make is to support this podcast, your favorite podcaster, and it's thirty one podcasts in thirty one days. MikeyPodcast dot com for less than ten cents a day, you get each episode. So it's like for like nine cents, you get an episode for nine cents. That's cheap. Come on, man, you can pay me nine cents. Get it together. MikeyPodcast.com. Connect with me on social uh, and do me a favor. Tell one person about this podcast. Just one. So they'll know. And that's it. That's the key. Awareness. Knowing is half the fucking battle, everybody. See you tomorrow. The Mikey Podcast.